All right, Brian, what time does your Google clock say? My Google clock says we are on the straight up. It is 7 a.m. here in Mountain Time in Denver, Colorado. What time is it over there in Trustville, Alabama? Eight o'clock in the morning in beautiful central Alabama. Let's get our theme song playing and get the day started. What do you say, buddy? Let's do it. This version sounds a lot like the other version. Got a steel guitar with us Good morning. Never gets Hi, old, everybody. Man. Never gets old. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode four of Leadership and Laughs with Pete and Brian. We're happy to have you along today. Oh, Got yeah. John. Oh, yeah. John Free says he woke up early just to be on time. That's leadership right there, my friend. I love it. Hi, John. That's leadership. Want to let you all know we're happy to have you today. If this is your first time joining us, we call this leadership and laughs. The key word being leadership. Laughs may not be, may, may or may not be joining us throughout the day. But I'll tell you something funny. We got some great feedback, Brian and I. So we're doing what, what they call in the TV world a two camera shoot, a two camera shoot today. So we have one uh, laptop that we're doing our show on. And on the other laptop, we are zooming where we can see each other's facial expressions. We can see what each other is wearing. We can see what each other is about to do. And I'm staring into your soul, Brian, as I look at you right now. Yeah, I'm not sure this was a good idea, Pete. This is a horrible <laughs> idea. Brian is, <laughs> Brian is in a bunker it's... in his basement surrounded by a bunch of camouflage. And <laughs> We're, I'm a prepper. Are those, are those ready to eat meals behind you? What are those cabinets back there, buddy? Uh, right, right back here, we're going to have a bunch of uh, office supplies and <laughs> old, old little kid stuff that we're saving for, uh, for our grandchildren, I suppose. Well, you, you know when you're relegated to the basement when your office is. At least you've got your own space there, buddy. So if if you're a first-time listener, uh, this the, the, the show is live. We like it to be live. We want you to call in. So if you're listening, like my buddy Joe, probably up in New York, is listening, uh, go ahead and, you know, you can call in at any time. We're going to have some stories. We're going to have some lessons. We're going to have some game shows. We're going to have some jokes. And we're, we're just going to hopefully make this the best hour of your week, Brian. The best hour of, of your week. So... Uh, what else do they have to do before we get started? A so, comment or call or what? Yeah, we do. We want to encourage our uh, our listener engagement. You know, good leaders always encourage uh, engagement. And uh, we want you to do that too. So we want you to text in, which uh, several of you are already doing on the app. Uh, and you know what? Throughout the show, we want you to call in. This is our fourth show. Fourth show. This is the fourth one. And, the, and in the first three what we did was, uh, you know, we have our, our little segments that we kind of outlined, and those are subject to change, of course. Uh, but we um, we had a, a call-in segment toward the end of the show, and we're going to scrap that. We're, yeah, we're, no, yeah. I mean, you can call in now. You can yeah. call in during <laughs> our game show later. Uh, you can call in uh, to give your opinion or... Uh, you know, my uh, my kids can call in and ask what's for breakfast. <laughs> it was it's funny because we would do the whole show, and then when we finish the show, we're like, okay, lines are open, call, and everyone's like, uh, we thought Crickets. you were done. Like, Crickets. yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, if this were a real television show, we'd be canceled by now. So, uh, <laughs> there's no, but luckily, it's it's nothing more than a live podcast, which means we can go to our first segment, Brian, uh, which is always called leading off. Leading off, this is where we start the day with my good buddy Brian, and he leads off with the news of the day, the story of the day. Leadership lessons are going to help you be the best leader you can be based on current events. What do you say, Brian? All right, so we're going to lead off today. <clears throat> we have, uh, you know... Let's let's be honest. Every story that you see on TV is about the coronavirus, and it's causing us a lot of stress. COVID nineteen. Um, yeah, it's it's, uh, but it's what's happening. This is our this is our life these days, and and uh, we're not going to try to stress about it. We're going to try to find some some you know rays of sunshine in here. And the first one, Pete, this this cracked me up when I saw it. 
but this is real. Um, social distancing is proving bad for gum and mint sales. Oh, mercy. <laughs> Who knew? Does that make sense? So <laughs> basically fewer people seem to care about their uh, fresh breath during the, I, I mean, I haven't brushed my teeth since like <laughs> March 2nd. Yeah. <laughs> I actually got up this morning and I told my oh, wife, I'm, I'm, putting on the ex- I'm putting on the exact same shorts and shirt that I wore yesterday. And her response was, so? <laughs> yeah. it, was, it wasn't even like, don't do that. And it was like, so? So uh, mints, what'd you say? Mints and gum. Mints and gum. So Hershey's uh, has said that demand for uh, mint and gum has dropped 40 to 50% in the last few weeks holy moly you know these are things that we learn about because you know you just don't these all these supply chain things you're hearing about meat you're hearing about chicken you're hearing about toilet paper you know but this this could really affect the company's bottom line if people aren't out and about interacting with people and they're not buying as many gum and mints that's a that's a huge hit to a leader's bottom line Right. And, uh, and, and Terry just texted in. She says, no one cares if they have bad breath at home. That is good. That is a, that and, is a correct statement. And since Terry is my lovely wife, I'm worried that, <laughs> I, frankly, I'm worried about the comment. Now we know why you are in the basement. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here nice. all week. Well all right. done. So anyway, the, this downturn in, in the demand for gum and mints appears to be uh, pretty widespread in the, in the four-week period uh, that ended April 11th. So the four weeks before April 11th, in-store gum sales. Now, nobody's going to the store, right? right. Uh, but gum sales are, are down uh, like 40% compared to last year. Wow. And mint sales are down about the same amount. Uh, and, and so everybody's just... Nobody's face to face. And when you're wearing that mask, you know, when you're wearing right. a mask. Right. You know, and uh, Birmingham, where, where I live, the city of Birmingham, the, the state of Alabama came out yesterday with their recommendations. We're at a safer at home through May. I'm sorry, through, uh, yeah, May, May 15th. The only thing that we're really changing over the next two weeks, Brian, is retail stores can now open at 50% capacity. Restaurants are still closed. Churches are still closed. All of the tattoo parlors uh, are still closed. All of the hair salons are still closed. But hopefully now people can get in and start buying some of those things. But when it comes to the face mask, the city of Birmingham, which is where my office is located, has done mandatory masks. It's a $500 fine if you are outside or in a workplace in the city of Birmingham. So I wonder, will mint sales go up or down when people have to wear face masks Like, does wearing a face mask make your breath even worse because it's all sucking back in? Or do you just not care at all because you're wearing a mask? Well, I don't know. Uh, But since the mask goes over your mouth and your nose, uh, I had this happen to me as I was out hunting and gathering for my family last weekend. I went to Costco and I I drove through a a local Chick-fil-A and got some, uh, some food on the way. And then I got to Costco and got out of the car and... One of those things you don't think about. I I, uh, I burped in my mask. Okay, <laughs> big old big old burp, and Thank and uh, and I and and I surprised myself. I was like, oh, that's oh, that's, that's not pleasant. That's disturbing. All right, so <laughs> I love your wife. All right, so go <laughs> ahead. We've got <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brian still leading off. We hopefully we haven't lost you yet. All right, story number two. Story number two is a heartwarming story out of uh, Illinois. Uh, this is going to be uh, near Oak Lawn, Illinois, and it's Richards High School. Richards High School, um, you know, the principal there and the and the leadership staff uh, took some time last week to actually drive around to the homes of all of their staff members uh, to deliver lawn signs as a reminder of their employees' value and very simply that hey, listen, you know, we we really appreciate what you're doing, uh, leading our online learning efforts right now as we try to wrap up this school year in a strange and unusual way. Uh, And so they put uh, lawn signs in all of their uh, staff members' uh, lawns. And um, it says, happy Staff Appreciation Week. Um, And they just wanted to say, Hey, you know, we miss you around here and we appreciate what you're doing. 
Half so, of me thinks that's a fantastic idea. Half of me thinks that could be a death penalty for somebody getting to – who's that person? But, you know, in the South, if you walk on somebody's yard and you're not invited, you know, <laughs> strange things happen. So – yeah, you've got to be you got to be real careful about that. So, can you imagine the cranky teacher going, "Hey, you're trespassing. Get that sign. I just had it fertilized. Get it off my. I'm just trying to tell you thank you. I'm just trying yeah. to say good job. You know. So, but what a great job by the principal. When you talk about leadership lessons, Brian, just knowing that he wants his people to who are doing at home teaching and at home schooling to feel valued. That's a nice thing to do. I like it. I love the idea. It is. It, you know, all the teachers said that it really, uh, you know, had some enormous uh, significance to them. And, you know, that principal, that leader right there just did something that didn't probably cost a whole lot of money. One of our texters said, you know, lawn greeting cards. Um, but it's it's uh, it's a small it's a small spend for a big return. Yeah, I've been doing um, a lot of uh, lunchtime webinars, and we've been talking a lot uh, recently about workplace culture and making sure employees don't get burnt out and things like that. You know, leaders these days, Brian, have to remember that even when they're displaced and even when their employees are remote, some are st- I, I know a lot of you who are listening are still going to the office, but a lot of you are working remotely. What can the leader do to make sure that he's still recognizing making sure people feel good about themselves, mm-hmm. making sure that, that they feel valued. So just a simple idea of putting yard signs out that say, hey, I'm a teacher here. We appreciate you. Keep it up. That's got to make an employee. I mean, what can we do, Brian? What else would be similar to that besides yard signs? What, what do you do for your employees or what are some things to do some quick recognitions like that? You know, I think it's important to recognize um, both publicly and privately Okay. Um, and, and, uh, and often, you know, for, for all the little things and, and sometimes for nothing at all, it's, it's just important to make our employees not only feel appreciated, but valued. Right. Uh, I think it builds trust and, absolutely and, um, you know, it's, we, we, at Disney, we used to talk about Lanyap, right? Remember Lanyap? Lanyap, uh, little something extra. That, that, little came, something extra. that came from, uh, one of our favorite leaders. Uh, shout out to Lisa. Yes, um, actually, Lisa didn't invent Lanyap. <laughs> I believe I, I believe the French Creoles invented Lanyap. But she's yes, the one who, uh, who told me about it. But Lanyap basically is when you get a little something extra, just a little yeah. something extra. It doesn't necessarily cost uh, very much, uh, but you know, uh, it really can go a long way in and return tenfold on uh, an employee's loyalty. So emails, little notes, little uh, Slack messages, whatever you can do to recognize people, just like this principal did with his employees. All right, man. I, thought, I hope we got one. I hope we got one more for leading off. Just Uno one more. Mas. Uno mas, my friend. All right. You ready for this? Bring Burger it. King, you've heard of them. I uh, enjoy their chicken sandwich sliced in half. Sidebar story, Brian, as I cut you off in one of 20 times I'll do today. Yeah. Every time I get my Burger King chicken sandwich, I enjoy it sliced diagonally. And I always like it cut in half. It mortifies my son when he goes to pick up lunch for us when I'll, during this pandemic. And I say, make sure you get my chicken sandwich cut in half. He's like, I'm not going to ask for your sandwich to be cut in half. If that's what I like, Brian, that's what I like. So, well, and, and why wouldn't you? Yes, slice I, it in I half. Prefer, I, enjoy. I prefer my sandwich cut in half as well. I do it at yeah. home. Uh, yes. I do it at the restaurants. Uh, you and I have been out to eat lunch together. You and, have uh, high food demands, Brian. You have certain things that you like. So. <laughs> That's correct. Okay. So Burger King is uh, is launching a new campaign. Apparently, Burger King spends a lot of money on uh, billboards. And unfortunately for them, not a lot of people are out driving around right now. So they've launched a new social campaign called Home of the Billboards. Okay. Because uh, uh, usually they're home of the Whopper. Right, uh, right. But here's the deal. Um, you can get a free Whopper if you if you take a picture of or, or get a picture of uh, one of the, the Burger King billboards and okay. use it as the background of your Zoom meeting. That's so, all I have to do. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, you can actually uh, upload a photo of yourself using the, the Burger King backboard or uh, billboard as your background sure. in your virtual meeting, and you upload that photo on Twitter, tag the brand using the hashtag home of the billboards 
Okay. And uh, they will actually direct message you back with a code to be redeemed on their app. So they're giving free. away free Whoppers <laughs> if if you use. Now, can you imagine you're you're having a virtual meeting and and uh, right and, and right there in the background is home of the Whopper. Well, the good news is during the meeting when someone goes, "Well, what are you having for lunch today?" You can go, "Well, what do you think I'm having for lunch today?" I'm having <laughs> I'm a Whopper my, and fries. I'm having a uh, free Whopper of the week. Yeah, think of all the Zoom meetings you're in. I wonder, and you may not have all the information listed in your in your document there but is it one per person maximum one time or is it every time i'm in a zoom meeting if i screenshot the zoom meeting and do it out there because i could eat with, with as many zoom meetings as we're all in we could be eating free whoppers for weeks exactly uh no it, uh, blah, 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 blah. it doesn't say um so there you go there's your okay. there's your loop well, repeat well, just let, make let, sure that your whoppers cut in half Yes. <laughs> well, let's make sure that we go to that. And again, Brian, I, I, I love the idea from a creative thinking leadership perspective. I, I'm going to tell a story about, about car insurance in, in just a little bit, because how's that for a, for, for a drop? Stay tuned for a great story about car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> just, just absolutely <laughs> killed. And we just lost four, four listeners. Okay. Um, but people are not driving, buddy. So if they're not driving, right? They're not seeing the billboard. So marketing is down. So there's more people in virtual meetings. I love the creative thinking. I love it. Way to go. Uh, three great stories, Brian. And that's what we call Leading, Leading Off on. with Brian. Oh, Brian, I love when you get us started during the day. Well, what could possibly be next? Uh, I, you know, uh, uh -oh. oh, no. What were we going to talk about? Well, I don't know. This is exciting. I feel like John Krasinski in a quiet place. What's what's around the corner? Is, is it Michael Myers? Is it is it is it Freddy Krueger? Get to the chopper! <laughs> Hide in the in the barn with all the. Why would you get in the car? Get in the car! It's time for. They did what? Oh, this is where we take stories about leaders that do stupid and dumb things. And they, they make mistakes for their companies, and it leads Brian to ask the following question. They did what? Yeah, but here's what I'm going to do. We're not. What are you going to do? <laughs> are you gonna do? We're, we're, we're going to do positive they did what today. So, what? again, yeah, I know. It's not as much fun, but we're going to do positive they did what. So, I've got a couple stories here that I want to talk about regarding um, leaders doing great things. So we can we can take this idea of they did what and turn it around. Now, Brian, one you've probably heard of is this has been in all of the news for the past four weeks is Kent Taylor. Does that name ring a bell? Kent Taylor. What? No. That's what, no. Okay, we're talking. <laughs> Kent Taylor is the co-founder and CEO of Texas Roadhouse. Oh. Now okay. does that, that ring a bell? Sure, that Kent Taylor. Well, I didn't know you meant that Kent Taylor. Yes, as as we all know, and, and all of our listeners know, because we've got a bunch on today. Thank you to Tradville, Brian Terry, Joseph's Buglet. Thank you, Jilly Jill's here today. Sherry, Taria, thank you for listening. Uh, feel free to comment or call in if you've got thoughts about this. Um, he's he's giving up his entire bonus and his entire base salary to pay his chains workers during the coronavirus. That's now, nice. Uh, yeah, it's nice. And what what we always hear, Brian, is people always go, "Well, of course, if I made that much money, I would do that. If I made five hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, sure, I'd get." Would you like you know? Hey, what? No. <laughs> I mean, would you? Would you? No. Really get away? So, um, his spo the the spokesperson for the company said, "Kent Taylor has always said that Texas Roadhouse is a people company." So again, from a leadership, putting your money where your mouth is, literally. Texas Roadhouse is a people company that just happens to serve great stakes. His donation of his salary and bonus to help employees is the embodiment of that. We're blessed to have his leadership. I think Chick-fil-A, I think back in the day, Chick-fil-A also said that. They said something like, we are a customer service organization. We just happen to be in the in the chicken business. Uh, same thing with Texas Roadhouse. They're claiming that they are a people-based company. They just happen to serve steak. So his base salary is $525,000. His bonus is $525,000. So on a prorated basis, it's about $1 million that's being donated directly to employees to help pay for them during this time. So he did what? I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's, that awesome. is incredible. That's very, that's a good, that's a heartwarming story. Something else that the company does is they donate $5 million to Andy's Outreach. Not sure if you know that Andy Armadillo is the chain's mascot, Andy's okay. Armadillo. 
So they have a, a, a charitable fund. We do this where I work at Jefferson County, Alabama. It's not a charitable fund, but we've got a fund where employees can donate some of their vacation time. If they have too much, if they have a lot of sick time, they can put it into a bank so that those employees who are struggling and they run out of sick time or vacation time or all their FMLA or whatever it may be, they can then get into that bank. So it's not quite as grandiose, but it's still a message saying we're all in this together, kind of helping each other out. And he's got $5 million in that charitable fund to help the, the employees as well. That's um, awesome. Do you have Logan's Roadhouses out there in Colorado? I don't Okay. No, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know of one around me. You know, uh, when you talk about chain, we have, we have Texas Roadhouse, Texas Roadhouse, right? Chain steakhouses. You've got what you got Outback. Uh, we've got one out here that's based in Texas. It's called Saltgrass Steakhouse. I'm not sure if you heard of them. You've got Logan's, right. you got Lone Star. So, you know, there's, there's so much competition out there in this arena. So to have him do this is important. Um, I want to draw your attention to Logan's Roadhouse. Logan's is really big here in the Birmingham area. But of course, they have recently filed for bankruptcy. Um, oh. <laughs> and all of their stores are closed right now. Um, they filed for bankruptcy in 2016. Their sales slipped by 11%. Their sales slipped 5% in 2017 and 2018. And recently they've closed all 261 restaurants and they're about to file chapter 11. They might reopen. They might not. Here's my point. Some people will say that's a business decision. I say it's a leadership decision. Not to disparage a company that's going bankrupt, but your customer service, your employee turnover was never that great at the Logan's restaurants that I went to in my location. So um, keep that in See, mind that, you know, Texas Roadhouse has great leadership. That's why they're still in business, Brian. OK, so you're saying that the two are connected uh, without a doubt. Shall we keep going? You want another one? I want another. They did what? Yeah, I can tell you're hurting. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> they did what? <clears throat> Have you heard of this hotel chain, Oyo, O-Y-O, Oyo Hotels? Have you heard of that? I, I have not, but I, I can't wait to try them out. Either have I. They are a hotel industry. Their, their portfolio consists with over 43,000 hotels with 1 million rooms, 130,000 homes, 800 cities, 80 countries. Since we're doing nice things today that leaders are doing, what do you think this CEO is doing? Take a guess. Oh, uh, the, this CEO... Uh, donated his yacht yes if his yacht was his salary give yourself a bell so he's doing the exact same thing this ceo plans to forego 100 percent of his salary for the rest of the year and again give it back they've already taken steps to support the medical community they are giving 300 hotel rooms to all medical professionals doctors nurses and first responders who don't want to go home because they're working on the front lines so what a fantastic example there of giving back we've got all these vacant hotel rooms they're not being used brian let's see if we can give them to our first responders so again another great example of leadership there on the positive side of they did what do you have time for one more absolutely let's do another they did what coming around the corner brian there he is is auto insurance oh uh, did you save uh 15 percent I tell you, don't get we we should do a branding episode one time. It is fascinating to me how the auto insurance companies have decided to use the jester uh, archetype and just I mean, Geico is about humor. Um, Farmers is about humor. Um, Aflac is about humor. No one's really selling their insurance. They're selling anyhow. Don't get OK. We'll have to talk about that one day. All right. <laughs> But I digress. All right. Um, have you gotten a check back from your insurance company, Brian, because no one's driving anymore? That is very interesting that you say that because we saw a commercial on TV for a uh, for for a, uh, an insurance company, and my wife and I looked at each other and we said, "Hey, how come our insurance company isn't giving us uh, any money back?" And then, lo and behold, we did get a little return. We got a little bit of money back from our insurance company. And again, that's something that they don't have to do no one would fault someone would say well they're making all this money there's less people on the road they should give it back they should give it back yes in terms of you know good business models and good leadership you should get but you don't have to um the, the story i've got here from april 6 all state 
and American Family Insurance are giving back about $800 million to their customers, about 15% of their premiums. I know I've got Nationwide. Um, Nationwide just gave, sent us a check for, I think, about $50 for our premium or $100 per car, whatever. So again, leaders who are who are looking at this and saying, we don't have to do this. Of course, some people are kind of pushing back. Uh, Robert Hunter, the Director of Insurance for the Consumer Federation of America, says, is it enough? Probably not. He said, because claims are falling by about 85% due to the reduced number of accidents. So yes, less cars on the road, less accidents, there's less that. What do you do with all the extra money? It's nice to see that some places are giving it back. They're not giving it all back, but it's a nice leadership start to say, hey, let's give back some. So I'm glad you got a check. I think that's good leadership to say, let's make sure we're connected with our employees during this time. Awesome. That's, yeah, it's good these, stuff. These are happy stories, Pete. Happy stories for they did what, Brian, and th- and that's always good. Um, but there's something even more important than happy stories. Oh my word! Oh, I love this music. From Television City in Hollywood, it's time for Over and Under with your host Brian Buggy. Buggy. If you've you know, just joined us, if you're one of the beautiful people who have just joined us, you missed all the garbage. It's time for the best part of the day. It's kind of like a church where they sort of make communion at the end, so you have to sit through the sermons. <laughs> <laughs> I really, that's a really, I shouldn't say that's a bad example, but but yes. Hey, Stephanie, thanks for joining us today in Linga Longa. We appreciate you for coming in today. I want you to play along. You, you can type in, you can call us. Brian's going to take us on a fun journey here through a little game show called Over and Under. Take it away, Brian. Pete, it's everyone's favorite leadership statistics game show, Over <laughs> Under. <laughs> now, uh, you know, here's how it works, you guys. Uh, I'm going to present Pete with a few interesting and and timely uh, statistics. And he's going to have to decide if the actual number is over or under the number that I give him. Correct. And we, again, we want to encourage you to play along when I, when we'll just, we'll give you a couple of seconds to hit that call in button, hit the call in button and, and uh, play along with us. <clears throat> now I want you, I want you to know that I have hidden, 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 these from Pete. Right. So he's going to be hearing all of these questions for the first time, uh, just like all of you. There's no cheating on leadership and laughs. And we want to encourage you to play along. So uh, feel free to give us a call and play along live or go ahead and text your answers in as we try to guess over or under. Oh, dang it. Hold on. Say that again. Do it again. <clears throat> This is the rewind, rewind, rewind. Feel free to give us a call and play along live or text in your answers as we try to guess over or under. <laughs> We're just so stupid. Why do people I, listen? We are I so love stupid. It. And by Th- the way, that's we- why they listen. Yes, exactly. And by the way, Brian, I don't know what you're talking about, but I will say anybody who texts or calls with the correct answer will get a free leadership and laughs t shirt. That's Nailed incorrect. Right no, nope. <laughs> still not yet. When when are we going to offer those? When when, uh, when we can monetize this, which <laughs> looks which looks be. to be quite a bit off. All right, give me number All one. All right. So today's over and under has to do with our newest generation in the workplace. What we're calling Gen Z. Are you familiar with Gen Z, Pete? I actually dated a girl in college, and her name was Gen Z. <laughs> Well yeah, done, yeah. sir. Yeah, so um, go. I, I got a little scared there when you said you were dating a Gen Z because... Uh, <laughs> because how old are they? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, the millennials that we talk, the mil- millennial generation that we talk about um, so much, they're already grown up and well into the workforce. They're married, they have kids. Yeah. Gen yeah. Z are uh, generally ages 16 to 24, but they are the next generation of up and coming uh, employees and leaders and customers who are already entering the workforce and are out there affecting the economy right now. Okay. So we all need to, you know, be aware of Gen Z. That's uh, people like my sweet children, uh, and they are they are avid consumers of um, online 
everything, right? This right. is how they've they've grown up right. um, with with all this, uh, you know, tech, right? Um, that that we didn't have. So to you know, I love trying to explain what a card catalog was. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. How we used to have to do things. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, Gen Z recently surpassed the baby boomers as the largest cohort of consumers. So it makes sense that leaders and marketers have been scrambling to understand this group. And I want to give a shout out to uh, our friend Kate, who yes. uh, sent in this article for uh, for today's data. <clears throat> Let's do it. Bring it. Here we go. I have, uh, over the past three shows, buddy, I am four out of nine. That's a nice 44%. And in college terms on a curve, that'd be a C. So oh. I, I am I am C right now. All right. Let's 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 do it then. All, All right. right. Uh, so uh, today's data comes to us from Amplify Solutions. They're a, a youth marketing firm. Uh, and they conducted a survey of hundreds and hundreds of Gen Z consumers aged, again, uh, 16 to 24, to basically get to the bottom of how they're feeling and what they're doing during the coronavirus pandemic. Okay. So, uh, you know, of course, there are the things that we're all doing, like uh, binge watching shows and Correct. streaming movies, yes. uh, playing games, cooking. I'm doing a lot Going of things. outside, exercising more. Yes, we're doing lots of things during this time. Wait, sorry, what? You're doing what? It's supposed to be walking outside and exercising. Aren't you doing that? Anyhow, oh. continue. <laughs> oh no! Who knew that all. was an option? I didn't. I didn't know we were supposed to carve out time for physical activity. <laughs> all right. So, uh, but like all of us, Gen Z has reported uh, increased levels of depression and anxiety as a result of this home isolation. So, okay. here we go. How many Gen Z survey respondents indicated that they're using this time for personal or professional development? Is it over or under 51%? Oh, my word. All right. So you've got ages 16 to 24. Uh, the ones who are in school still, 16 to 18, are probably not using it unless they're counting their official school time as personal professional development. Uh, you're 18 to 24, maybe laid off, maybe unemployed, maybe furloughed. They're working at home. Um <laughs> Let's have a caller call in and play along with you. Somebody yeah, who hit the wants, call in button. Who wants to share? Who wants to share why they think? I've got a lot of people texting and typing in, buddy. I got a lot I've of over. I've got overs. Got I've got unders. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No one's really quite sure. They're all watching Tiger King, says Jill. Of course they are. Yeah. So Brian, no one's gonna call. So I will give you <laughs> I will give you my answer, which is I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to ask the audience, and I'm going with my buddy, John Freeze. I think the answer is supposed to be over, but I'm taking the under, as always. Taking the under. You're going to take the under. Yes. So uh, I'm going to read the question to you again, Pete. See okay. if no, you can change I, no. your mind. No, no. <laughs> these, are, these are people 16 to 24 who are doing professional development during this time. I'm going to say under. They're watching Netflix. They're hanging out eating. They are not getting better at their lives. Let's go. Got to be under. Stephanie agrees. Under. Let's go, baby. Oh, Pete, I'm sorry. Uh, the answer is over. Should have said uh, over. According to the report, 76% indicated that they're using this time for personal or professional development. I'm really proud of Gen Z. They've uh, they've always been future focused. I think 72% are lying, but okay. Um, <laughs> uh, many uh, of them... Uh, oh. I don't know what happened. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> There's our music. I, I started grooving. Uh, yeah, many of them were uh, raised during the last recession, and they understand the importance of being competitive in the job market. So That's, You um, know what? How about that? This just goes to show we got to be really careful with stereotyping and generalizing generations. Not all millennials like avocado toast, and not all Gen Z people refuse to be professional development focused. Look at that. Look at that. All right. All right, well, let's go. All right. So people are shocked, but that's that's the difference. There, there you go, Gen Z. All right. Same survey. Here we go. Um, I, I just, I, I love it. Every time I hear the music, I just start, I just start grooving. I'm doing the white man over by... Mm, mm, mm. Dude, you have your own game show theme song. No one it. else has that. 
No one else has that. If you do nothing else at work today, if you have, because you have a full-time job, imagine that you just stop working today. And when your boss says, where are my deliverables? You say, your deliverables are in my game show theme song that I did this morning. <laughs> Bam, done. And, and, Bam. and he or she would just walk away. All right. Bam, done. All right. So next one is over or under 50%. Okay. Gen Z respondents who indicated that it's appropriate for brands to advertise during the pandemic. Uh, all right. Well, here's my question. It, and again, John Free said we should do a session on branding and talk about this, Brian. Have you noticed that every single commercial has shifted their messages? Every single one is we're in this together. Every single one is yeah. we know what you're going through. Every single, and it doesn't matter what product they're selling on TV. They're thank you to our heroes and all of that kind of stuff. I don't even know what the so 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 I, I have to push back on the question and say, are they saying it's okay to do that, or is it I, this is okay to do any type of advertising? Are they saying it's okay for businesses to uh, to still advertise during the pandemic? Um, you know, citing reasons uh, such as businesses still need to survive in this difficult period. How are our Gen Z consumers looking at okay. uh, businesses advertising? Okay, so here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, because the survey was probably done a few weeks ago, I'm going to take the the uh, heart-tugging, heartstrings commercials off the table. And I'm going to take the question of face value, which is, there's a lot of bad things going on right now. People are losing their lives. People are working. Is it okay for a company to go out there and say, hey, don't forget to come and get your takeout. Hey, don't forget to come use us. Hey, don't forget to do that. And I'm going to say that this group is going to say lower than 50%. It's going to say it's appropriate because they're going to be more of a health-focused, future-focused, like you said. So they're going to say, companies should not be advertising right now. It's a bad Bad look. Oh no, it's actually a little bit over. So, uh, so you're over two today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more than half of survey respondents indicated that it is appropriate for brands to advertise. And you know what's most important here is that uh, Gen Z consumers are demanding that those who do choose to advertise during the pandemic are doing so thoughtfully. So you're you were you were right on it. You could have gone either way with this one. Right. Um, you know, they noted that rather than pursuing any uh, uh, performance based marketing, the, right. that brands really should focus their resources on, like you said, tangibly adding value to their communities and 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 motivating people to contribute to worthy causes, like you like you said right. during. They did what during during, um, during my debrief when I got the answer uh, wrong, and it's it, it's very interesting too because you know John, you know our buddy John who listens works in higher education, and he says it's a tricky space right now because you know we still have to meet payroll and sell our products and all that, but how do we do that without actually losing losing business? We do have a caller, uh, uh, Surfer Fox decided to call in and share her thoughts on this. Go ahead, Surfer Fox. Hello, yes. As a Gen Z, I'd like to ask, what is this card catalog you speak of? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> ah! uh, yes, beautiful. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> we will uh, just go to Google and look at card catalog. Yes, and see what's see what's out there. Yeah. Oh, the card catalog. I they love it. No, they have no idea. Thank what you, Surfer way. Fox. All right, appreciate that. We'll take any calls because it helps our numbers go up. So you can say anything. That's fine. How about that? And some people are actually commenting as well, Brian, who were saying things like, you know, how can we still advertise when people are dying and people are getting sick? And, you know, Stephanie makes a really good point there. But it's this fine line. There's this there's a sort of triad of people's health and the business economy and the world economy and my family and where this intersects and comes in really is what defines leadership today is how do you balance balance this actual triad. So really good. You got, you, hey, you got one more for me? Is it possible? I got one more and it has to do with online shopping. Oh, online shopping. I'll tell you. I'm also a fan of online shopping. Go ahead. I'm 0 for 2. Let's do one more. Those of you who are playing along, I hope you're 2 for 2 and doing well. Let's do it. Bring it. All Brian. right. So um... you lost the question. <laughs> I did. I'm looking at my show doc and I just totally lost the question. No, it's right here. I found it now. I don't need it. I don't need the music. I'm good. 
uh, I was going to giving myself a bell. All right. Well done. So, um, women apparently are spending less money than usual shopping online right now. Uh, okay. We're talking uh, again, Gen Z, Gen Z women ages 16, 16 to 24, 24 are shopping are less spending, than normal. Right. And, you know, they, they want to see what's going to be top of mind for Gen Z consumers when they do resume their normal spending power uh, uh, patterns. But um, women are spending less money than usual shopping online, while men are spending slightly more. However, what they're saying is women are actually shopping online more frequently than men. Does that make sense? So they're, they're shopping online more frequently, but they're yes. spending less money, uh, which is why women are, in my mind, uh, smarter than... Uh, always smarter than us. And pretty. Smarter than us, yeah. Yeah. So... Great comments. All right, good. All right. So over or under, I'm going to put it again at 50%. Over or under, 50% of women reported spending most of their online shopping on clothing. I'm going to go with it. Uh, Are women spending more or less than, or uh, more than, sorry, I, I tripped myself up with the question. Here we go. <laughs> Over or under 50%. 50%. Are women age 24 who are online shopping, are they spending more than 50% of their online shopping on clothes? I'm going to take the under again, because here's my rationale. What clothes do you need? You're not going to bars. You're not going to restaurants. You're not going out. If you're buying stuff online, it's witty things you've always wanted to get, like like a new lava lamp for your office, or because everybody needs that, or something something fun or maybe a game to play, you know, no one is buying clothes because they don't need them. So I will take the under Brian. You're, you're going to take the under. Yes. What are, what are our listeners saying? Uh, I've got under, 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 and Joseph and John say over, but that could be from three questions ago. So I have no idea. <laughs> do, <laughs> have do, no we, idea. do we have any callers that want to weigh on in, on this tricky one here? Yes. Where do you think? Yes. If you would. What like is the percentage of women who reported spending more. most of their online shopping on clothing? You got All nothing. Right. All, All right. right. Pete says under and. Hey, thank you. One for three. 37%. 37% of women uh, have reported spending most of their online shopping on clothing, uh, while the vast majority are, you know, like you said, maybe they're looking for lava lamps. Lava lamps. Someone here said that they're buying supplements. Ooh, supplements uh, of, of what? What kind of supplements? <laughs> just, just, just to, to supplement your fantastic life, oh, apparently. I got buying a lava size. You got a lava size. Get you get you a nice lava lamp. Fifteen minutes a day. Stare at it. It makes you totally happy. Lysol wipes are things people are buying. Absolutely. No, you can't right. find Lysol wipes. Sure you can. You just got to go online and get them. Hey, buddy, this was great today. That's what I call over or under. Thanks for playing along, everybody. Um, if only we had one more segment we could do. Oh! Can you picture it? Can you picture yourself walking down Main Street? USA, the Magic I, Kingdom, Walt Disney World, Brian. I love it. This takes me back. Right now, I'm I'm eight years old. I'm holding my dad's hand as we walk down Main Street. Hey, mom, can we go to the Plaza Restaurant to have lunch today and get a get a get a patty melt or a, or a turkey melt, maybe? <gasps> Wait, are those characters, Brian? Are those characters walking down the street? All right, just I'm, for I'm lost in the music. Love What's it. The What's the worst Disney character that you that name a Disney character if you were walking by on Main Street and you and there was no line you would just go, eh? We'll keep we'll keep walking. Oh, I'll I'll, I'll tell you real quick. You know we're we're having this flashback uh, back to uh, back to my childhood and one of my earliest memories I vividly remember walking down Main Street or actually I was in the stroller. I was in one of those uh, those nice bent metal strollers that we had. Yeah, those, those didn't have any. Yeah, <laughs> Disney, Disney was safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. Here's a hot metal stroller in the 1970s with a million pinch points on it for your kids' fingers Absolutely. to get. Absolutely, <laughs> and and <laughs> and, uh, and and characters are walking down Main Street, and you know, of course, all all the characters get mobbed except for the big bad wolf. The big bad wolf walks up to the stroller, and I went bazoo. Yeah, I just I, I uh, 
it was uh, it was pretty scary. So yeah, that that's going to be my answer. That's a character I would not want to walk up to uh, even now as I approach fifty. For me, it's less fear and more just meh, as the kids say, M-E-H, as I walk down and I'm like, hey, there's Pluto. Hey, there's Goofy. You want a picture, kids? Hey, there's Mr. Smee. Oh. And most of us would go, meh, you know, with because, you know, who wants to get their picture taken with Mr. Smee? I, Mr. I mean, Smee's always out there. Yeah, he's like, because there's no one in line. <laughs> like, hey, can we get Peter Pan? Can we get Tinkerbell? Sorry, kid. Mr. Smee's right here. So, hey, we got some more listeners coming in, Brian, in case you're just joining us. Thanks so much. This is our live show. We do it every every Wednesday. And today it's called The Daily Disney. The Daily Disney is this segment. What we, oh, what we do during The Daily Disney, Brian, is we take a Disney concept, and I want you to think about it in your organization, in your life, Brian. Wherever you work, how can you apply some Disney magic to your organization? Love it. What do we do? What have we talked about the past three weeks, Brian? So we've been uh, covering the Disney quality standards. These are the the standards of, of quality that Disney has. And they're they're truly uh, drilled into the heads of, of all Disney employees, all cast members. And when I say drilled into the head, I'm using that in a positive tone. Correct. Uh, this yeah. Is- <laughs> yeah. They didn't literally, although if, if Disney could insert a chip a la, a la Logan's run, uh, 70s reference into our oh. hand. They would, but they yeah. but they don't. Uh, so we talked last week about safety, courtesy, and show. We've done those three. Today, I want to talk about efficiency. Brian, give yourself a bell. When the theme parks first opened in 1955, it was not safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. It was safety, courtesy, show, and do you know? I don't do know. Remember? It used to be called capacity capacity with the mindset of get as many people through as quickly and efficiently as possible. But they rebranded it to efficiency from capacity because capacity has a negative connotations, you know, cram them in, get them in as many bodies as possible where efficiency was more about how can we do Disney in a very safe, effective and efficient manner. So here's, here's a couple of examples. And I, I want you all thinking about your last trip to Disney, Disneyland, Disney World, Disney Cruise Line. And I want you all thinking about what efficiencies did you see? Where do you stand back and look at the Disney company and go, that's why Disney is so good. That's 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 something I see at Disney from an effi- not from a show, not from a customer service. But we'll go to the most typical one, Brian, which is queue lines. You know, queue lines. We always hear government say things like, man, if if Disney was in charge of the voting process in this country, it would go a lot easier. You know, if Disney was in charge of getting people inside this football stadium, you know, because how many times have you gone to a football stadium now and it takes a long time to get in? There's long queue lines and you can't get. Oh, if, if only. So queue lines is one thing I think that Disney does very well from an efficiency standpoint and again that all comes back to when when walt uh thought about getting everybody in he he wanted to be different from the carnivals the carnivals remember were kind of dirty and messy and yucky and he wanted his theme parks even the queue lines to have themes to it so here's a couple of points that i i i want to make when when we used to teach efficiency um because you and i both taught a program called traditions right what was traditions? It was, how would you classify traditions? Uh, traditions is, um, you know, if you were just going to kind of put a general term to it, uh, traditions is, you know, Disney's uh, corporate orientation program. Yep. Uh, however, the way that, that we did it is uh, a lot of focus on the heritage of the company and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, where we came from, where we're going, what the vision and mission is. Uh, and it wasn't really just about how to do your job. It was every employee, every new cast member hired uh, from the top to the bottom went through two the days tradition. or a day yeah. and a half of uh, traditions orientation. It did not matter if you were a senior vice president or a frontline cast member. You went through and in that training class or in that training program or that orientation, we used to teach a lot of time on quality standards, safety, courtesy, show and efficiency. Here's a definition for you, Brian. We strive for the fastest and most effective systems, processes, and procedures in order to provide a quality guest experience. So keep that in mind. In your organization, if you want to type along, tell us some efficiencies that either you remember about going to a Disney theme park or that you have in your organization. What are some ways that you as a leader no matter where you work in higher education and nonprofit and for-profit, how, what effective systems, processes, and procedures are there to provide a quality guest 
experience. A couple of quick examples. You know, back in the day when I worked in the resorts, we had what were called Swiss cheese keys, Brian's. So Swiss, Swiss cheese, cheese keys. keys were the old, this is back in the 90s, but they opened your hotel room door, but they had holes punched in them. And that's what opened, I think it was called Ving card. That's what opened right. the door. Then we gave them a second card that was a resort ID card that you could do. And then we combined those two into just one card. Then we realized that, oh, can we put tickets and entitlements on that card? That'll make it more efficient. Oh, then they can charge with their card. Now we can make it a magic band. So you just keep on delivering and delivering and delivering with the end result. Yes, you want to make it quicker, faster, better for the, for the end user, but also it's a more efficient and effective process. Now, let me take you to some of your organizations. When your customers call you, is it efficient? If a customer wants to get in contact with you and your company, do they have to go through a lot of hoops? Do they have to sign in here and sign in there? And, you know, we all want this one touch sign on stuff. So from an efficiency standpoint, and the thing that we also always taught, Brian, efficiency ties the others all together, right? So safety, courtesy, and show, but efficiency isn't the last one. By being more efficient, your company becomes more safe. By being more efficient, you can be more courteous. By being more efficient, the show is actually out there um, at a long time. So this whole concept of being efficient, it's not just about capacity and getting people through. It's about great systems. It's about making it easy for people. And that ties into customer service as well. And that's, that's the great thing about these quality standards is none of them really stand alone, right? Absolutely. They all work together. In fact, uh, Jilly Jill wrote in here that something as simple as, okay, where do your people congregate before the theme park opens? Oh, so they- all of a sudden they're outside Main Street waiting to get in, backing up, backing up, backing up. Well, from an efficiency standpoint, let's get them onto Main Street first. That way it gets them in and, and we, we can put the big ropes all around the other lands of the Magic Kingdom. It also might increase sales. People can get coffee more. And this, this happened to us, Brian, where I work. We have a training graduation ceremony every year. And what we do is if you complete a leadership certificate program, you come one morning in September, we have a nice breakfast. We, 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 we have a, a guest speaker. We give you a plaque for completing leadership development. It's pretty cool. But what we did one time is we're like, don't let anybody in till nine o'clock. We, we had our own rope drop. Everybody wait in the lobby till nine o'clock because we're still setting up and we don't want people coming in and the food's being set up and all of that. Well, people started arriving at 830 for some unknown reason. So we have yes. over over 200 people who were there at 830, even though we said they can't get in till nine. Now they're all waiting in this small area. It goes out into the parking lot. They're asking questions like, hey, do you have any coffee? Hey, uh, is there something I can drink? Hey, what are you supposed to do right now? And what we want to say is, what are you supposed to do? You're not supposed to be here till nine. (laughs) That's what you're supposed to go back in your car. So the next year we made that adjustment, which is just, you know, test and adjust. Oh my word. Let's let people come in, get the coffee, tell them a different time, let them come in and socialize because he creates a bad first experience by not being, by not being efficient. Do you remember that term test and adjust? Test Uh, and adjust. Yeah, we, we use that all the time at Disney. Before we opened a ride or a restaurant, uh, we, we, we would have a test and adjust period. Let people get on it first. How did it go? What if you get a lot of people in the lines? You know, so a lot of efficiency, Brian, comes from planning, proper planning and trying and new, new things over, over and over again. Do you have any, a, any stories about efficiency or anything you remember about our time with the college program or getting people registered for classes or operations, anything like that? You know, the you, you hit the nail on the head when when you were talking about uh, letting the people in and and uh, shopping on Main Street because not only does it uh, create that efficiency of starting to let the people come in. Gosh, do you remember how your heart would drop when you get off the monorail there at the Magic Kingdom and you see the lines backed up all the way to the monorail yes. ramps? Oh, and, we picked a crowded like, day. This is awful. Oh, no. When in truth, every day is a crowded day. But, right. uh, you know, the, the efficiency to get them in, get them on Main Street, and, uh, and, and get them, you know, already shopping. That's, and I think uh, about, I mean, you're exactly right. I, I think about our people who work in higher education, uh, college registrations. Uh, how do we make sure that that's an efficient process? Now, you talk about card catalogs. I'll take you back to the times you and I were in college. Do you remember a process called drop ad yes. when you were in college? 
So uh, back if in, my parents are listening, uh, you'll know that I did a lot of dropping ads. So again, in in the United States here, in, in in our colleges, back in the late '80s, early '90s, you signed up for college classes, and if you did not like one that you got, or you you like, man, I wanted this, you had to go wait in line at the gymnasium with hundreds of other people, and you had, and it was all a manual process and and all that kind of stuff. It was extremely frustrating. And my daughter now, who's just graduating from University of Alabama, when I tell her about these stories, she's like, oh, you just go online. If there's a class you don't like, you click remove, you add a different one. And I'm like, you have no idea how much more efficient these processes have gotten. Jill talked about, we had a college program check-in one time at Pleasure Island, which was lots and lots of people going to lots and lots of different things. Try, But see, the, here's the key with efficiency, everybody. I want you to take this away. Try different things. Try different things in your organization. If you have an organization where you don't open your doors till eight o'clock for the public and people start lining up outside, they're knocking on the door, they're looking inside, that's inefficient. You're, you're, you're affecting their customer service. It's bad show. Should, should you open a little earlier? Can you have them come in and socialize and, and do something like that? So you have to make sure that you're a lot more efficient in your processes. That's just Excellent. my take. That, that, yeah. That's a good take. So, um, you know, we're we're understanding that nowadays uh, check in. Uh, oh, yep. Look at that. Uh, Tradville says check in takes 10 minutes now. Well, you talk about an efficient process. Yeah. It used to be go here, go there, try this, see, see the education department, see the housing department, get your keys. And in case any of you who are listening have um, have kids or who are going to go into college, may Brian and I both highly recommend the Walt Disney World College program or just the Disney College program experiences. When the parks reopen and ramp that back up, there is nothing that will make you a leader better than experiencing the Disney company while you're on a on a college internship. So we're going to wrap up the segment that I call the Daily Disney. We're getting to the end of our show, Brian. I hope you've got something else for us. I, I do. I have one more, uh, one more little thing called Did You Know? Da-da-da, da-da-da. Excellent. Did you know? Apparently, Pete, there is a baking frenzy right now, according to uh, King Arthur Flower. Uh, people are baking like crazy. I don't know if you've been to the grocery stores, but it's hard to find uh, baking supplies. Hard to find flour uh, because everybody is at home. What are you going to do? You, you can't go out to get that uh, Chick-fil-A cookie. You got to make your own. My smoking hot wife, who happens to be listening as well, has we have just gotten into the cooking channel. I don't know why it took us so long. Maybe it's the pandemic. Maybe it's a desire to eat all the time that we're doing now. But all of a sudden, she's like, we've got to watch the baking cook-off. We've got to watch this. And we've had this channel for years. And I know people are addicted to cooking shows. We haven't been. We're all in now. So that, if you're talking baking, we're all in. Yep. And so uh, the makers of uh, King Arthur Flour say that the that, that ingredient on its online sales of, you know, there are online sales of all purpose and bread flour in March were up more than 2,000% year over year. Did I know that? No. You're, you're supposed to say, did you know? And then it Did will, you know? Da, 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 da. That what, Brian? 2,000%? Did you know? That, uh, that baking is the new baseball. It's the new pas uh, national pastime. Man, we're all at home. We're trying new things. We're baking everything. I love it. And I did not know that, buddy. I did not know that. Uh, Jill has just reminded us that she doesn't have toilet paper, flour, sugar, eggs, or milk. There is nothing to bake. There's nothing to bake. Well, you can still get a Stouffer's frozen meal and stick it into your microwave. You are now a baker. <laughs> Excellent. Brian, guess how many listeners we had today total? I'm going to put the over under at 26. 35, everybody. Hey! 35. We want to say thank you all so much. I want to thank Oli Harris, who just joined the live studio as we wrap it up for today. <laughs> as we wrap it up. Oh, someone's calling in. Hold on, Brian. This is exciting. Let's take a caller as we end the show. Hold on. Lower the music. Everybody, hang on. We are not done. Let's bring him in, or him or her. I don't know. Hello, you're on Leadership and Laughs with Pete and Brian. Go ahead. Hello, how, this is, I'm Oliver Harris. Hi, Hello, how Oliver. Hi. Do you have a thought for anything we talked about today? Well, I like everything today you did. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for calling. Will you call us again next week? Okay. All right, we're wrapping up the show, but thank you so much. We appreciate you. I'm so glad. Thank you. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from London. 
Oh, would you? At what time is it in London right now? It is two fifty-nine in the morning. Uh, no, in, in the, the afternoon. afternoon. In the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, Hello. Yeah, no. That's not even lettuce French. Are you kidding me? That's hey, exciting. We're hey, listen, we, we do this show every week and we're glad we have international listeners. And thank you so much. Uh, are you in a leadership role where you work? Uh, no. Okay. Well, that's okay. Everybody can be personal leaders, family leaders. There's all kinds of things you can do. Uh, Oliver, please call us again next week. We'd like to talk with you more. We're at the end of our time. Uh, Thank you so much. Brian, another overseas listener. How about that? I know. <laughs> Anyhow, from Birmingham, Alabama, not Birmingham, England, from Birmingham, Alabama, I'm Pete Blank. And from the Mile High City in Denver, Colorado, way up here in the mountains, I am Brian Voggy. We will see you next week. Tell your friends, forward the show. Uh, we have this is the best hour of your week. We'll see you next week, Brian, on Leadership and Laughs. Thanks, everybody.